All right, well, you're getting less bang for your buck this 4th of July if you purchased fireworks. The cost of those sparklers and firecrackers, like pretty much everything, is way up from years past. According to the American Pyrotechnics Association, prices have doubled since 2019. And here to talk about what's driving up the increase, Salvatore Style. He is the owner of Alba Wheels International, a freight and customs clearing company. Thank you so much uh, for being with us. You know, 95% of fireworks uh, sold in this country are imported from China. So we thought you'd be the perfect person to kind of give us perspective as to how much more it costs and how that cost is passed from the port to the customer. So, yes, great question. Uh, basically, like you said, 90% is imported from China. The costs have doubled uh, since uh, pre-pandemic levels. And not only is it a price issue, but it's an uncertainty issue. So basically you have these fireworks, which primarily used the 4th of July. It's not like you're going to use them for many other holidays. And the transit times and the uncertainty of getting the goods to the port is one issue. And then when the port finally unloads the vessels, uh, currently we have which a lot of people aren't aware, over 50,000 containers sitting at the port of Long Beach and LA, and about 20,000 of those containers have been sitting there for over nine days to get to other interior ports. So how could you possibly plan a year ahead not knowing what um, I call it the port of black swans in China, where you never know if there's going to be a COVID lockdown or if a vessel is going to have a blank sailing, meaning it's not going to sail to the U.S. and be canceled. This is just far, far too much uncertainty yeah. for what's going on right now. Well, and it's interesting because I want to say last year I noticed that there were cities that couldn't afford to put on their fireworks displays. You know, the big ones. Uh, never mind the fact that people, mom and pop, uh, couldn't get the fireworks to show their kids in places where you can use them in the backyard. Uh, but the supply chain issues, of course, have been a huge concern, as you, you know, touched on there, especially as more people are shopping, more people want to get back to normal. Normal, but when is it expected to get back to normal for freight? Well, everyone's been hopeful, but the reality is I just read an article uh, when they announced that their uh, investor meeting, one of the largest retailers in the United States said that 2023, they don't expect uh, too much improvement. And as a result of that, a lot of retailers and especially apparel manufacturers are now manufacturing seasonless goods goods that could go from one season to the other so they don't get expired uh meaning you know you're going to have a summer good that could go into fall and so forth and so on because it's so unpredictable i like to mention one thing though is quite curious the supply chain has become so erratic uh so expensive that many retailers and companies if you purchase an item and you want to return it they actually tell you to keep it they don't want it they don't have the inventory uh, controls to take it back. The freight costs are too expensive. The warehouses are full. So a lot of products, the consumer actually has ended up keeping because the retailer doesn't want it back. So imagine that. But the, the costs are double uh, as opposed to a couple of years ago. Do you think those yes. costs are going to keep going up? Can, 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 right. Is that even feasible? Well, well, here's the thing, okay? So you hear about consumer demand going down. There still is a lot of demand, especially in the luxury sector mm -hmm. tremendous amount of imports uh luxury items can't keep in stock so what i feel is that even if demand starts to uh depress and decompress you have to remember the steamship lines 11 of them which bring the majority of goods into the united states are all foreign owned so if they start seeing price suppression guess what we'll take another couple of vessels off the trade lanes and all of a sudden you have less capacity and as a result, it's highly likely those rates are also going to increase again. So it's not just a matter of uh, supply and demand. It's a matter of manipulation of rates because these steamship lines are in business. They made over $200 billion last year. And I don't think they're going to go to their board members and say, by the way, we made $200 billion collaboratively. And this year we only want to make uh, $20 billion. It, it just doesn't work no. that way. Yeah, they're not going to be like, let's give everybody a break gotcha. because, you know, we yeah. did so good last year. We did gangbusters. And, and, so let's exactly. give them a, a yeah. sale. <laughs> yeah, they give, they give, yeah, not happening. So that's the reality. Um, and I'd like to mention another thing which uh, puts things in perspective. Okay, real you fast. Talk about, you want to talk about infrastructure and delays yeah. and so forth? As a, comp as a nation of our stature, I'd like to know why we rank the lowest in efficiencies at the ports throughout 
the United States mm. compared to almost every other country in the world. Why? Because there's no automation. And that's a big issue where the unions don't want to automate because they want to preserve their salaries of over $200,000 a year on average per longshoreman. And I think that's a big issue in America today. We might need to ask that question and get answers right here on Morning in America, as we like to do. Salvatore, thank you so much for your perspective and just telling it straight. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Happy Fourth. Happy Fourth to you, too. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.